Hello, this is Miss Augustine, and today we're going to begin Chapter 7, which is about the names and formulas of compounds. And so we begin with binary molecular compounds. And binary molecular compounds are composed of two nonmetallic elements. And since it's nonmetal, nonmetal, this bonding is covalent. And there are multiple ways that nonmetals can combine with covalent bonds. Specifically, there might be single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, or some combination. So we're going to begin with writing names from formulas for these molecular compounds. So with these binary compounds, there's different ways that they can combine, as I said. And if we think about carbon and oxygen, they can combine to form two different binary compounds, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. And so in naming these compounds, it's necessary to indicate the numbers of atoms of each element that are present in a molecule of that compound. And the way we do that is we use prefixes. Prefixes are used to tell how many atoms of each element are present in a molecule. So the prefix we use, prefixes we use for binary molecular compounds are as shown here in this table. And we hold you responsible for the prefixes from 1 through 10. And you'll notice it's mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca. And I like to point out here that these are different prefixes than we use when naming the number of carbons in a chain of hydrocarbons. So for organic compounds, you'll recall for 1 through 10 we used meth, eth, probe, but, etc. For binary molecular compounds, we use this set of prefixes. So two different sets of prefixes. So there are rules for writing the names for these molecular compounds. And we begin by saying that the subscript is used to tell you the prefix for each element in the formula, those prefixes that I showed you in the previous slide. And we have to write the name of the first element using a prefix only if the number is greater than 1. So if it's just one of the first element, no prefix is used. And we write the name of the element exactly as it appears in the periodic table. And again, no mono if there's only one of the first element. And then the second element always gets a prefix. And we have to use the root word of that element. And then the ending is always IDE. So we have to change the element's name to give it the IDE ending. And in chemistry, that IDE ending tells us it's a binary compound. So for example, if the second element was bromine, then we would have to change that name to bromide. So again, the root there is brome. So it goes from bromine, as it is in the periodic table, to bromide to indicate it's a binary compound. And again, always use a prefix for the second element. So here, if we have the formula CO, that is carbon monoxide. The prefix mono is 1. And CO2, the first element is carbon, just like it appears on the periodic table. And then di, because there are two, oxide. Oxygen, IDE ending. So ox for oxygen, ide, because it's binary. Note, no prefix for carbon, since there's only one carbon in each of these formulas. If there's only one of the first element, you do not use the mono prefix. So let's try another one, CCL4. So the first element is carbon, so we just name carbon, no mono. The second element, the subscript is 4, that means tetra, and chlor for chlorine, and Ide because it's binary. Here we have N2O5, so we would name that dinitrogen, penta oxide, because there are five oxygens. And I like to point out that this prefix is attached to the element. So the subscript is five, 
So my prefix is attached to the element it applies to. The dye is attached to nitrogen because there's two of that element. So make sure you're putting your prefix in the right place. So dinitrogen pentaoxide, or we could also write this as just dinitrogen pentaoxide. Dinitrogen because there's two nitrogens, pentoxide because there are five, ox for oxygen, I'd because it's binary. And again, if there are two consecutive vowels, you are allowed to drop the first vowel to make it easier to say. So here is a familiar compound, that's water, but let's talk about its real name. So there's two hydrogens, so dihydrogen, and there's only one oxygen, so monoxide. So we could also write that as dihydrogen monoxide and drop one of those O's. And then SO2, there's only one sulfur, so that would be just sulfur. And then di because there's two, ox for oxygen, i because it's binary. And again, note if there are two consecutive vowels, you are always allowed to drop that first vowel. So now we'll talk about writing formulas for molecular compounds, and again, from the names. And there are rules for writing formulas for molecular compounds from their names. So we use a prefix to tell you the subscript of each element in your formula, and you write the symbol of the first element using the appropriate subscript to indicate the number. And then you write the symbol of the second element, and again, using a subscript to indicate the correct number. And remember that one is understood in chemistry class. We never use subscripts of one. So to write formulas of the following, we have tetraiodine known oxide. So tetra is four, and known or nona is nine. So tetra equals four, so I4. Known or nona equals nine, so O9. And so put it all together and you have I4O9. Not so bad. Writing formulas for the following again. Sulfur trioxide, so tri is three. There's no prefix, so there's only one, so SO3. And if we had diphosphorus pentafluoride, di means two, penta means four. So P2 diphosphorus, F5 pentafluoride. Remember that the prefixes are attached to the appropriate element. And so that is all for now. So we will do some worksheets for this and I will make you some recordings. This is Miss Augustine signing off.